You are a visionary, an entrepreneur, a business owner. You want to make money from your passion and create the freedom that you've dreamed of. But it's slow. The income is slow, the impact is slow, and the freedom is slow. And here's the kicker. You've actually never been busier. You're working longer than ever, burning through daylight, and your family have forgotten who you are. You're tired and frustrated and you can't even sleep well at night. The business just feels so heavy and all you ever wanted to do was just make the money you want to make doing the things that you want to do. And that's where I come in. Hi, if we haven't met yet, my name is Dr. Brooklyn Storm and I'm the host of the Business Acceleration Podcast where we shift your business from heavy to light, time poor to time abundant and from income lack to income growth. We're going to achieve it together with my 20 years experience as a psychologist, helping people just like you to break through their barriers. And we're going to throw in a little of the woo as well. So thank you so much for pushing play today. Let's begin. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Business Acceleration Podcast, and I am so pleased to introduce you to Chantal Girardi. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, you did. <laughs> oh, good. So Chantal um, and I have connected on Facebook, and she is a Facebook strategist. And I'm really pleased because she's going to be able to share with us today a little bit about her journey um, through starting her business and how she got into Facebook ads and um, where her business is heading over the next little while, what her plans are for the future as well, and of course, how she keeps everything in alignment. So Chantal, can you tell us a little bit about who you help and how you help them? Yeah, thank you. Um, Yes, well, I empower business owners with the skills and strategy to successfully manage their own Facebook to generate a result. So uh, many business owners are completely overwhelmed with this new era of using Facebook in their business. And many of them are startups or they don't have a marketing budget um, or alternatively, they uh, have staff in place. uh, They just don't have a strategy in order to implement Facebook um, and they they want control over it. They, They don't have the marketing budget to outsource it to someone else. So um, I have the pleasure of getting to motivate and inspire them and to give them the power to be able to do it. So not to generate friends, <laughs> but actually to generate uh, paying customers. Okay. And I can't ignore this. You had a really great elevator pitch right there. And I would love to hear it again because you did that so succinctly. I was really inspired by by it can you say it again (laughs) about Uh, who you help and how you help them sure i empower business owners with the skills and strategy to successfully manage their facebook profiles to generate uh clients (laughs) uh, and grow their business Um, so if you're stressed and overwhelmed and you've got no marketing budget i can help you to get clients and grow your business using the free capabilities of facebook i mean this this sounds (laughs) right Really exciting. How did you start this business? Out of pure necessity. <laughs> so 11 years ago, um, I I had twins that were four years old and my baby was one years old. And we moved here. My husband at the time, he got a job transfer. So we came here and he was working and I was looking after the kids and he actually got made redundant twice in the time that we were here so there was always the threat that potentially we could go back to south africa um and i did what any good person does i started playing on facebook (laughs) and but what i realized was that whilst being on facebook i realized that i could increase my personal branding uh grow my business and get more exposure because when i moved here i didn't know anyone nobody knew me um and i i was i was a personal trainer And I don't know if you know about the Gold Coast, but there's like a personal trainer on every corner on the Gold Coast. So, and I wasn't a sports model. I wasn't a, (laughs) I wasn't a supermodel. I wasn't a a professional athlete. So nobody knew me. Um, And with this little tribe of children running around, it was very difficult to go around and to try and meet people. And with not having a, a, no startup capital or no marketing budget. Mm. So um, I basically taught myself Facebook and I grew my business from, from doing that. So, okay, you had me at no marketing budget. Is it possible, really, to 
build brand awareness without having a huge marketing budget because I think this is one of the challenges that a lot of women in business experience when they're first starting up. It's kind of like I need the clients to get the money so that I can do Facebook advertising um, and then it's like, well, I need to do the Facebook advertising so that I get the bookings, I get the clients in my diary. So I think sometimes we feel a little bit lost and not sure really where to start. Yeah, um, I can tell you now that I've worked with over, I think we're on 200 now, over 200 business owners worldwide and many of them, I'd say 90% of them are not using Facebook advertising. So there's only a small no. portion that are actually using advertising. And I, I'm actually starting to think that Facebook advertising is becoming a gambling addiction for people and that they want to throw money at it be out of desperation as, as a quick fix or a band-aid but when you actually explore the um the full capabilities of facebook um the free full capabilities of facebook and if you establish a solid facebook foundation and if you know what it is to that if you know what to do to actually get a result you can do all of that for free because you don't have to pay to use your personal profile on Facebook. So if you do it strategically and if you do it uh, genuinely and authentically and not spammy, <laughs> um, yeah. then you can actually, you can actually build your personal branding and business branding. Um, and yeah, as I said, we've got, so we, we're getting some really, really good results. Wow. I'm sure everybody's probably sitting on the edge of their seat because when you're, as you know, like when you're running a business, you're looking at everything. I was just talking to um, Kate, and Kate's from a recruitment company. We were having a conversation um, on her podcast around, um, you know, sometimes we get caught up with bright, shiny object syndrome and we might be really good at the thing that we do, like that direct client work, but when it comes to the business side of things, we're kind of winging it a little bit. And that means that because we don't know what we're meant to be doing, we look to perhaps social media. Well, no, I looked to social media and I was seeking advice from people online and everybody was saying, oh, you're not going to build your business without Facebook ads, you know. And I thought, really? Okay, well, then that's what I'm going to have to do. And I didn't know anything about Facebook ads and I got caught up. I got really swept up in it. And it was a mind game almost because then I believed that I wasn't going to grow my business without ads. And then it was strange because I would sort of step out of that space and then I'd be like, no, 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 I'm going to do it all organically. I'm not going to throw money at ads. And so I'd settle into that space and back would come the fear, I guess, of not having clients or the fear of not being visible or the fear of not having engagement in my content. And so then boom, I'd be back to and it's such a hamster. It's so exhausting. And to throw money at Facebook ads and you know, not get results. And when you don't have the money coming in, it's depressing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I love what you're saying that it's possible to, um, you know, with the right strategy, build visibility and build brand awareness without necessarily needing to have that you know, Facebook ads budget. And you're so right. I hadn't thought of it like Facebook ads is becoming a gambling addiction. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's, um, I, I see it all the time. Um, and I loved what you said. I mean, I loved how, how um, authentic you were in, in, and how vulnerable you were in just opening up and saying how you feel about Facebook because many people feel that way. So um, it's good for us to talk about that and to acknowledge it. Um, and the thing is, is that everybody's disillusioned because there's so many people out there saying so many different things. It can be overwhelming and confusing for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and it does become a time waster because if we don't know what we're doing, we just go on and we scroll and we, I, I call it spitting. We just kind of spit all over the platform and, and hope something's going to work. And then when it doesn't, we get upset. So it's this massive roller coaster ride of it doesn't work. And so I'm just going to try this. I'm just going to do that. And, 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 because we don't quite know what we're doing and we don't have a strategy, we don't have an action plan. It does take time. It is stressful and it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, but it can work. It can work. It's about sitting down and working out, um, 
you know, I talk about the eight uh, fundamentals of Facebook. And once you've got those eight fundamentals of Facebook nailed, um, that's the starting point. And no one should even look at Facebook advertising before they get the, that foundational uh, part in place. Um, and what we also need to understand as well, that Facebook, Facebook is a business and Facebook advertising mm -hmm. is how they make their money. So um, mm -hmm. they are going to tempt us. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think we, that, that was all really highlighted of when was it about 12 months or, or 18 months ago, when all of a sudden the organic reach for the business pages, which is sometimes called fan pages was slashed. And then it became, you know, nobody was looking at anybody's fan pages or business pages. There was no reach. There was no engagement. There was no traction. It's still super hard. And the pages that get the, um, well, a lot of the pages that do get the engagement and the visibility are running ads. So, yeah, it is designed as a business. Facebook is a business. Yeah, you're right. So for me, we it's not a case of... Yeah, for sure. For me, it's not about how much engagement you're getting or how many fans you have on your page, because for me, that's very sort of ego driven. Um, and recently I had somebody say to me, oh, you don't get a lot of engagement and you don't get a lot of, um, you know, you don't, you've only got a thousand, I think about, I've almost got almost 2000 people on my page and none of them are bought. Um, and I go, well, it's not a popularity contest for me. That's what I'm not interested in. A lot of the time, the people that are engaging are not your actual clients. They may be cheerleaders, they may be your supporters, they may like, might like what you say, but they may not necessarily buy from you. What I'm more concerned about, and you can't, you can't often see this on a page, but how many inquiries are you actually getting? How many uh, phone calls are you getting? You know, how, how many um, potential clients or leads are you generating? So that to me is what my focus is on. And you can't always see that when you look at someone else's page. Um, yeah. And yeah, and that's, and that's what I focus on. So, you know, at the end of the day, Facebook, it's a social media platform, which means it's social. So it's all about relationships. So if you know how to use it to uh, build, to uh, build your relationship with people online, to get them to know, like, and trust you. Um, and if you know how to do that, if you know how to network online, if you know how to not be spammy and to do things and follow the right Facebook etiquette, um, you can generate huge amounts of opportunities so on that then what do you think are some of the mistakes that we're making um, as I mentioned earlier I think the one of the biggest mistakes is people don't do the foundational things so even if you were to explore Facebook advertising um, if you don't mm -hmm. do the foundational the eight fundamentals of Facebook what ends up happening is Facebook's going to penalize you anyway. So for example, if your page is not set up properly, if you don't know who your audience is and know them intimately, um, like your demographic intimately, which like you mentioned earlier, a lot of people in business don't have their business basics sort of in place. So if they don't have, um, so the eight, the eight fundamentals, I'll do them very quickly. Number one is, you know, you've got to know how you want to be seen online. So what is your personal brand and how public or private do you want to be? Um, that's always important uh, for safety as well. Uh, number two, you want to make sure you know your clients, their fears, their needs, their wants, their aspirations. And it's so that we can communicate to them because whatever they're interested in, we have to show interest in because that's how our relationship is. So, for example, if you went on a date with somebody and um, we've all been on this date and the guy in front of you goes, me, 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 then, you know, you're not going to get a, he's not going to get a second date. Um, and it's exactly the same on Facebook. So we, we have to know our ideal client intimately, which means we've got to get to know them. Um, it's twofold. We're not just going to go and talk about us, but we actually want to go and talk about their interests as well. Number three is we want to look at, their, um, at our competition because if our competition online, we have to see what it is that they're doing. So not so we can copy them, but so that we can stand out and show them why we are different and why they should choose us over somebody else. Um, and number four is having consistent branding and key messaging. So the words that come out of our mouth, um, and you mentioned it earlier, that little pitch that I've kind of got going on at the front. I do that everywhere. Um, 
and you know, I get a lot of objection from it, believe it or not. A lot of people go, oh, you use oh. the same thing. And I go, no, well, you know, it becomes memorable. And I've come up with one or two sentences that are clear and they're not fluffy. And it says exactly what it is that I do. And we have to be able to effectively communicate that through our words because when we meet people in the flesh and in the person, they can see our face and they can see our gestures and they can, they can kind of, and they can ask questions and have a sense of how we are. But when we're online and we're writing, we need people to stop scrolling and we need them to, to read it and understand us. So we have to have those key messages, those consistent key messages. And when it comes to Facebook ads, that becomes even more important. Um, number five is having that strategy. So we have to start with the end in mind. And the end in mind has to be money. It just has to be. Because at the end of, end of the day, energy in is energy out. So if it's not translating to money, it's not working. If it's just translating to clicks or engagements or likes or, you know, it's, it's still not translating to money, it's not working. The strategy needs to change. So you have to have that uh, that nurture sequence, that nurture journey that, that you're taking your uh, people on Facebook on so that at the end you can get a yes from them. Um, and then number six is, oh, do you want to ask a question while we're there? No, 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 here you go. Okay. Here you go. No, so no, I'm so excited. Yeah, this is gold. <laughs> so number six is um, the, all the R's. So we want to review our work. So, you know, it comes down to that strategy. Is it working? Is it not working? So you've got to go into your insights and review what is working, what posts are working, what time of the day is working, who's engaging. So review what you're doing. The other R is you want to respond. So, so many people go and they, they go and put content out there. And then when they actually do get a conversation going, they don't say anything, they don't respond. Um, and you could imagine if that if you were having a date with somebody and you were talking and they responded and then you didn't respond to them, yep, you wouldn't get a second date. So it's the same thing. Uh, the other R is, is you've got to be able to be able to recognize recommendations or referrals on Facebook. So if somebody tags you, if somebody's giving you a lead, you actually know, have to know what to do with that lead, how to pitch, how to get that person on Facebook and, and, and have that conversation with them. And then uh, the other R is recommendations. So making sure that uh, you are getting recommendations and repurposing those recommendations because people want to see, hear from other people who've used your services, um, how you are. They don't just want to hear it from you. Um, and then number seven is get them off Facebook. So um, if, if you are talking to them on Facebook um, and they are interested, the sooner you can get them onto a phone call or onto your database or into an inquiry form or something, a landing page or something, the better because they actually get cold because Facebook is so noisy and there's so many shiny lights on it. Uh, you want to get them off as quickly as possible while they are hot. Uh, so get them on Facebook. And number eight is you have to have a professional online uh, profile. So you've got to understand your privacy settings. You've got to make sure you've got no dodgy photos from, you know, three years ago when you were pole dancing. Um, and, you want to make sure, <laughs> and you want to make sure that you filled it out properly because at the end of the day, Facebook has an algorithm. So the algorithm is, is that whatever you put into Facebook, so whatever you type in, whatever you engage in, Facebook stalks you and decides what it's going to put in front of you. But it also does that for your competitors. So in order to do that, your profile has to be set up properly with all the right tags, with all the right keywords, with all the right content, key messages, all your links working. And this is on your personal profile and your business page. Because when you do that, you're telling Facebook what you're about. So when other people show interest in that, organically, Facebook's going to bring you together because of that algorithm. So when people say the algorithm is not working, it's, genu it's generally because they're actually not inputting the right data in, which means Facebook has, is confused. It doesn't know what to put in front of you. And if your message is unclear and your page is not, um, you know, you don't have your key messaging and your concepts are not really defined on your page and you're not talking to your ideal client, the algorithm is going to get confused and it's going to go, I don't know what to show who, what, like, I just don't know what to put in front of who. That's gen generally why it doesn't happen. So for, for me, those eight fundamentals are like the absolute most important thing before you even think about uh, looking at Facebook advertising. Okay. Wow. That is so much good information. And it's prompted me as you're talking, I'm thinking about my personal profile and for, I've always used my personal profile for my business and I've never had any issue doing that. Though I know in the helping um, profession and in, in my industry, 
there are a lot of women who are a little bit nervous about what they share publicly. And so trying to educate them around, you know, treating your personal profile as if it were an invitation for somebody to come and meet you like at a networking event or something like that is probably better. And if you want to have a different profile for your family and friends, that's a personal one, maybe you set that one up and you put that on private. But maybe I've always liked using a personal profile because I always found I get um, more from that and you're right about the engagement as well because I was thinking about what you said there that people who engage are often not going to be your clients and that's been my experience too um, a lot of the people that came to me didn't come as a result of a launch or anything like that they've knocked on my door on social media and said I've been following you for 18 months I've been following you for 12 months I've been following you for six months and yeah, you're my people and I know that we're going to be a good fit and I really want to work with you. How can we get started? So, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? And Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad that you recognise that as well. And um, I also am glad that you also brought up the point about the personal profile and business page because most people, again, are really scared to use their personal profile because they just don't know how to set up the privacy settings. The good news is, is that especially with the Zuckerberg thing that happened a year ago with the whole privacy issues, mm -hmm. is that they've tightened up on all of that, which means everything that you do on your personal profile, you can decide whether or not it's going to go out to the public it's going to go out to just your friends mm -hmm. list or you can actually mm -hmm. specify specific groups or people that you can group together and that information can go to them. And that's your personal profile. But I often say mm -hmm. to people that your personal profile is about people who already know, like, and trust you and like, attract, like attracts like. And we're all in the yeah. energy space that if it doesn't feel right, I mean, you should stalk everyone before you put them on your friends list. And if it doesn't feel right, then don't put them on your friends list. So, you know, trust, trust your energy and your feelings about it, but obviously do, do your due di diligence and, and have a stalk as well. Um, and then, yeah, just explore those privacy settings so that you are comfortable with, with everything. That's um, really relevant what you just said there, because I haven't been stalking. <laughs> I don't think many of us do. When you get a friend request, I think to myself, it's only lately I've been even clicking on their profile to see, you know, I was just like, oh, sure, we can be friends. And I've connected with all of these people that um, we never have any engagement or anything like that. And I don't even know who they are or where they're from. I was just not thinking about it. And I was just accepting friend requests. It's only really been the last few months I've started to click on their profiles and I make a decision. Do I want to add this person or not? <laughs> and the other thing was too, the, that all came about because I had started just, you know, saying, oh, sure, you can come in and yeah, you can be my friend. And then I was getting pitched to in my yeah. private messages was just straight away within moments of accepting the friend request and thinking I was just like being hospitable. I, I didn't have my business head on <laughs> and I let them into my, into my house, so to speak. And then they would just start selling me a vacuum cleaner. I'm like, what are you doing? You don't even know me yet. You don't even know if I need a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think maybe after speaking to you, Chantal, I need to go and, um, reflect on my friends list and I think I need to spend some time going through it and just <laughs> maybe updating it to be more reflective of who I am and what my brand is and I think that I'm not the only one right <laughs> tell me that <laughs> yeah uh, that's great I think personal profile is you're only allowed to have 5,000 friends so, um, you're, yeah, you're only allowed to have 5,000 friends. So at some point you are going to have to do that regardless. Um, but not only that is that people can see who you're friends with and they can see who you're engaging with and like attracts like. So it is important to, um, you know, also make sure that you're going to be attracting the right people moving forward. Um, but again, we also want to acknowledge the algorithm and the algorithm is also looking at who you're friends with as well. And it's also matching you with other people that are the same. So, um, yeah, be, you, you do have to be mindful of that as well. Um, and I always say to people, you have to follow best practice on Facebook and there is etiquette. There is Facebook etiquette. So it's important to know what that etiquette is. And anybody who thinks that they can just inbox you and spam you, um, yeah, they're not your people. Um, and um, I do think it is getting better though. I don't think it's getting worse. I think people are starting to realize that that's not the way to do business. 
Um, so yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully that's, that is getting better. Yeah. And I love what you were saying around like attracts like, because, you know, I'm a huge um, manifestation fan. I, I integrate um, spirituality and energy with uh, business systems and processes to help private practice owners feel more connected to the business in ways that allow them to express their purpose so that they can make money, of course, number one, because without the money, they're not going to be able to reinvest into the business and reach more people and help more people, but also to create um, lifestyles that they want. And so part of that means making sure that there's a sense of alignment between what our purpose is as a um, female business owner and how we're showing up in the business, what our um, marketing looks like in the business because we're talking about marketing today and making sure that everything feels right. And I think, you know, what you're saying here is that one of the things that we need to be mindful of is making sure that the people that we're accepting onto our personal profiles are aligned with who we are, are aligned with our purpose, aligned with our values and align with our brand values and vision. So um, I'm really loving hearing that. And it, it just makes so much sense. But it's not something I think many of us have ever really considered before, the impact that those friends on your list might be having in terms of what Facebook is presenting to us as the end user, but also what's going out to those friends from us. Yes, and um, and it's also good to note that with the strategy it's not one size fits all so people always think that it's the extroverts that are going to do well on facebook but you know there's a different strategy for everyone and like you said earlier if if you have to be in flow and it has to be enjoyable because else you're not going to do it so you don't have to create you will, will be fearful of looking at someone else and going, well, their strategy is to do, you know, Facebook lives every day. Um, and, you know, and I'm not that kind of person, so I can't do it. So I'm not going to be successful on Facebook. No, I'm um, going back to what that number one, you know, fundamental of Facebook is. And that is, is that how do you want to be seen on live? What's authentic and genuine to you and working a strategy around that, because you will attract, you will still attract your people by doing your thing. Extroverts will attract those people. Introverts will attract those people. So whatever it is that you decide to do on Facebook, as long as you're consistent with it, it will work. Um, and it still can be in alignment with who you are and it can still be in flow with what you enjoy doing. So it's not a chore. So how long does it actually take then, do you think, for somebody to go and overhaul their profile? It is is something that yeah look it depends on everybody's experience everyone's at different levels so they were all at different levels of understanding and then we also different levels of use some people have been on there you know fumbling for a certain amount of time some people have got completely dead pages so sometimes it's better just to end it others have got pages where um they've got sort of a good foundation so you can kind of revamp it and get it up and running the good news is that whenever you do decide to now start working on it, as long as you have sort of a plan in place and you're doing it with some forethought, it can start to generate clients quite easily. We, we've had, um, if you go look at my reviews on my Facebook page, there's some people that have, while we've been in the middle of a consult, they've actually already got a phone call or got a lead through Facebook. Um, but then there's others that takes a bit longer because, you know, their packages might cost a bit more, their process might still need to be tweaked a little bit, the whole, you know, the, fu the funnel or the journey needs to, some streamlining. Um, so it really does depend where they are sort of in what it is that they're doing and what they're hoping to achieve in the long term. Okay. Um, this has been so interesting. I'm just having a look at my notes because you said so much and it was really, really helpful. And I, I'm sure there are women that are saying, Brooklyn, ask this question. So I'm just having a quick look. Um, yes, around... Um, responding to comments that people are making on your posts. I think this is something that sometimes we struggle with as well because we're not really sure what to say. How does somebody keep a conversation going? Or is there a strategy around having those conversations? I mean, sometimes people write really um, thoughtful, um, lengthy responses to some of our posts and 
I think sometimes we can struggle to think, you know, what's an appropriate response and how do I keep this conversation going? Do I do it here in the public space or do I do it over in a private message? You know, and does that conversation have to, um, because I've never thought of what you're talking about in terms of having a strategy for my personal (laughs) robots and I'm thinking in future when I'm having conversations with people on my Facebook profile, will it need to be within that strategy? I've answered uh, yes. my question. I yeah. D- no, no. <laughs> um, well, look, I can elaborate <laughs> on it in that, again, when it comes to creating content, we have to do it with some foresight as what is our expected outcome? So if we're putting content onto the page, what are we hoping to achieve? Is it to get engagement? Are we asking for people's feedback? And we, remember that if we are asking for people to engage and to give us their feedback, we also have to be respectful, acknowledge and respond to it as well. Um, if it's something that will benefit the public, then I would respond publicly on that page so that everybody would benefit from it. If it is negative, I'll try to get those people off Facebook straight away and say, look, I'd love to keep this off of Facebook. So I'm happy to book a call or whatever, and then just get ready to block that person as well. So it is important to obviously know how to do that very quickly. Uh, block people through private messages, personal profile and business page, because it is different. Um, and then also having a sort of strategy around that as well. I call it a crisis management or reputation strategy in, in place where you may even wish to turn off your reviews um, while that person is is upset at that time so they can't damage your page. Um, but if somebody is wanting to just give their feedback, that's fine. But if somebody is, because giving feedback is one thing. Some people just love to have their say, but they're never going to use you as a client. Um, however, if somebody actually is interested in being a client, then as I said, the strategy needs to be book them into a call. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a chat about that because I'd love to hear more about you. So make it about them. Um, and that's generally with that discovery call as well is just letting them know that the call is about them. It's not about you pitching to them. It's about you getting to know them um, and seeing if, it, seeing if there's a, a fit for both of you. Yeah, it's got to be not pitchy. And I think there's a fear around people sometimes booking calls with, because so I work with, um, as you know, like coaches, but also people that are psychologists, social workers, counsellors. And um, yeah, one of the fears that clients have around booking discovery calls with coaches, because we don't do discovery calls in allied health. Um, but I mean, we take inquiries, so I guess you could kind of call taking the inquiry a bit of a discovery call because you'd be trying to find out if your service was a good match. But for the sake of this, um, clients are a bit nervous at the moment about booking discovery calls with coaches because they're very worried that they're going to get pitched a high ticket um, offer at the end. They're very worried that it's just going to be more about the coach than about them. Um, And then sometimes too, I've even had calls with potential clients and, you know, we've solved an issue on the call or we've solved something on on the spot and there hasn't been a pitch at the end. My interest has just been in showing that I can give the value and I'm just trusting that that's going to build my reputation over time. And so I'm happy to do that. So there's no pitching. And then they get suspicious about that. And then they think, oh, I wonder what's going to happen now. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it, to sort of um, navigate that call and I love what you were saying about really making sure that if you're a coach you're going to be doing those calls keeping in mind that this is really about that person it's not about you pitching your service and getting the sale I think that the way that you can open people up to being more comfortable about actually taking action and booking that call is if you handle your the objections in your content so if in your content on your Facebook page you are, and I talk about touching people in multiple places um, through your content, then you handling all those objections. So by the time they get to the call, they actually kind of know what it is that you're going to be doing with them. They kind of already know what your services and packages are. They already know the problem that, that you solve. They already know your story and, um, you know, why you do what you do. Um, they know your business backstory. I mean, these are just some, some of the things um, that I was looking up earlier here. It's, I, I say, I call it, how do you get a yes from your client? Um, and you've got to get a yes from them from your content, usually before they'll pick up the phone and then give you a yes to actually buy from you or use your services. Mm-hmm. 
So by already showing them your services and why you've created those desirable offers because of the problem that they solve, and when you show your expertise online um, and give social proof because people want to see from other people the results that it is that you've had and share your success stories um, and show your values and your sense of community um, and really spend some time getting to know your audience and, and involving them in, you know, asking them and getting their feedback and, and having this conversation with them. When you do all of those things, you're more likely to get a yes and they'll pick up a phone and call you. And then when they have that call, they, they already soften. They're already now a warm, a warm lead. Um, and this is obviously often why Facebook ads don't work is because people go and they throw money at an ad and it's a completely cold audience. I mean, I always say to everyone, you may think that you're special, but on Facebook, you're not. There's a thousand of you. Um, there's a thousand of you selling exactly what it is that you're selling. So you have to, you, you've got to get them warm. You've got to introduce yourself. You've got to get them to know you before you can even think about selling to them, that you have to touch them. Um, and you've, you've, you've got to break that barrier. And no one is just going to pick up a call and call you. A lady that I was talking no. to in the US earlier, she was like, oh, yeah, you know, we spent, you know, $1,000 on Facebook ads and we just wanted somebody to either book a discovery call or to buy this high ticket offer. And I said, I'm sorry, but you're not special. It's not going to happen. I don't mean it rudely, but there's a thousand of you out there. It's a cold audience. You've got to first deepen that relationship and create a meaningful relationship with them first. Um, and your content is one of the ways that you do that the way that you create your content on your Facebook page, if that answers all those things, then those stalkers out there who are stalking you um, are really going to have a sense of who you are. And like you said earlier, and then they come knocking at your social media door um, and go, yep, I've been watching you online and now I want to work with you. Um, and it's because you've done that. You've ticked all those boxes and you've gotten a yes from them and, and they feel safe to now engage your services. Yeah, and I love what you were saying too around sharing, um, you know, perhaps testimonials or success stories and things like that. And this is something that is really, really challenging. I don't know about people who listen from other countries, but in Australia there were um, advertising laws for health practitioners that prevent us from having reviews. So we can't have reviews turned on on our Facebook. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about them if you have Google My Business because, you know, that's a Google thing. It's not a Facebook thing and nobody can turn off the reviews as far as I'm aware. You can apply to have bad ones removed, but I'm getting off track. But the thing is, it makes it very, very difficult, I think, because we um, struggle to find that social proof. We have all seen, you know, we see some of us 20 clients a week, some of us 40 clients a week. For group practices, they're seeing 300 people a week and they're getting really great results and getting really great outcomes. We can't tell anybody that we're getting really great outcomes. So can I share with you um, what, I, what, I, what I'd recommend? Yes. Can, I, can I recommend some, yes, something please. to you for your audience? So a couple of things yes. you can do. If yes. you do have the Google My Business, you can actually take sort of a screenshot of that in Google My Business and then create that as a post on your Facebook page just to show that someone else has done it. Um, so just a you know picture of it, remembering that you still want to tell the story above that image as well and say something along the lines that it was great working with this person. We got great results. They left this Google My Business review. Um, and then it's the same with LinkedIn. If they've lit LinkedIn ones or anywhere else, you can repurpose those. Another way to do it is if you have a website, you can actually take written testimonials, put it into the website and it looks quite fancy. So you can screenshot those as well and put those onto Facebook as well and tell the story. Um, you are allowed to tell stories. So for you to go on and actually tell a client's story and saying it was really great working with this client today, we've helped them to achieve this and overcome that. You are allowed to, you're not allowed to make promises, but you are allowed to tell a story um, of what you've achieved. So you can do that. One of the most um, effective ways of doing it is to actually interview your clients and by, by doing it in a Facebook lab, if you're comfortable with it. So whether or not you do somebody, again, it has to be someone who's happy to do that because not everyone would be happy to do that. But to have an interview with them and say, you know, how did you feel before we started working together? How did you feel before and how did you feel afterwards and have that as video content? That is a great way to work around that because people like to see directly from other people um, 
what is working or not working. And um, I know I started a, um, a monthly show, which I call the show, <laughs> Chantel's Show and Tell. <laughs> and uh, my show and tell <laughs> is, because um, that's my nickname, so show and tell. And, um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and what I do is I interview my clients and, show, and they talk about the results that they're getting in their business. So a mechanic will talk about what he does on Facebook, how he felt beforehand, how he feels now, and what he's doing in his business to get results. And then I've got an IT specialist and then I've got a pesticide company. And what happens now is other people get validation from that and they get confidence in working from you from that, especially if they see vulnerability. So in the health industry. So if they see someone else going, I felt like this beforehand, they will connect because remembering that when somebody comes to you, if they normally down in the dumps, like it's normally when they're in, in a, not in a great place. So it takes a lot of courage for them to build that trust up to actually walk through the door. Um, but seeing other people and acknowledging that they also felt like that, but now they feel like this, um, is really inspirational for them. It really does help motivate them to take action. I think that all of those could be really great strategies for people who are working as coaches because they don't have the legal restrictions around advertising um, with clients that we do. So when you're working in mental health, for example, in Australia, we can't interview a client on a Facebook yeah, Live because yeah. we would be seen to be taking advantage or they're vulnerable or you shouldn't be doing that because they might have felt coerced when really they didn't want to go public with their story. So anyway, yeah. basically we can't. But you did touch on something that we can do. So for those of you who are listening and you're psychologists, social workers, counsellors, physios, chiros, dentists, GPs, whatever it is you're doing, the thing that you can do that Chantelle was talking about was you certainly can um, tell a story as long as that story is de-identified and a simple way to de-identify your story is to change the gender, change the age, change the location. If it happened in Melbourne, you say it happened in Sydney. If they were 45 and female, you say they were 28 and male. Um, if they were in this profession, profession you say they were in that profession and basically you just want to um, only keep it short really only needs to be a paragraph or so but you want to talk about what the presenting problem was um, how you help that person and what the outcome was how how are they functioning now socially emotionally occupationally whatever it, it is that you were supporting them with so you can do that guys and you can put that on Facebook and you can put that on your Google and you can put that on your website and all those sorts of things too so Chantal do you have um, uh, I was going to say like a lead magnet or something like that, that um, our audience might be able to um, download or get on your email list so that they can um, receive more tips and useful sure. information from you. Um, so on my Great. website, which is um, www.chantelgerardi, and you'll have to get the spelling for that, <laughs> chantelgerardi.com.au. Um, on the website, there is a, um, we've got two at the moment. We've just done the 2020 content calendar. So if you actually go onto the website, you can download that 2020 content calendar. So it'll just help you fill in the gaps with your content on Facebook or any social media platform. But we've also have an ebook, which is called 21 Content Ideas That Outsmart the Algorithm. And included in that ebook is also those eight fundamentals. So uh, if you didn't have a pen and paper, didn't write those down, those uh, eight fundamentals are also in that ebook. So um, if you jump onto the website um, and scroll down to the very bottom, you'll, you'll notice the ebook there and you can subscribe there. Uh, we also do um, send out relevant information all the time, blogs all the time. Uh, we recently wi why Facebook ads don't work, the 10 reasons why Facebook ads don't work. So that's coming real soon. Uh, we've also done one on Watch Party and Facebook Lives and then groups and group etiquette and how to use hashtags. So if you want all that information, please subscribe because you will get all that information as well. Are hashtags just for Instagram or are they useful on Facebook as well? So hashtags are not are, are an Instagram thing. They're not actually a Facebook thing. And we have to respect each social media platform because that's when it works mm. best. So we don't need to use them gotcha. on Facebook. Uh, but people see hashtags and that's usually for two reasons. Number one is they've just allowed their content from Instagram to automatically go to Facebook, um, which means it's not going to get the same reach because we're disrespecting the platform. Um, and then the second reason is group administrators use it to control the content inside groups. So it's not a Facebook thing, it's actually a group admin thing that they 
use to control the groups. Um, so people always ask me about that. And yeah, there is there are a couple of blogs on my website around that as well. Great. So guys, I'm going to put um, Chantelle's contact details in the show notes. So you'll just be able to um, tap the link and they'll take you straight to her website and you'll be able to have um, a look there and um, download her 21 content ideas that outsmart the algorithm book that includes the eight fundamentals that you need to be mindful of and aware of. And Chantal, just before we finish, do you have any final parting words of wisdom that you would like to share with our um, listeners? Yes, I would I love to put you to. on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love this part. This part's really cool because, um, you know, everybody sees this bubbly, confident Chantel who's, you know, so inspired and so motivational. But what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, my first couple of years in business, I spent the first year crying every single day, like absolutely in tears because I was overwhelmed and so stressed and desperate really to get my business up off the ground. Um, so my, my parting words are for people to uh, know that we're all human, uh, to invest in yourself um, and get support, get support, you know, reach out, um, connect with like-minded people and, and don't struggle on your own. Um, because it's as soon as, as soon as I, I did that, um, it took everything to the next level for me. So, and, and I want all of that for you too. Well, thank you so, so, so much for being on the show and guys if you have any questions feel free to um, email me the emails in the show notes and we can absolutely have Chantelle back on and maybe she can do if you're up for it I'm just throwing you under the bus here Chantelle but <laughs> if you're up for it maybe we could do like a um, you know listen listener question and answer and you yeah, could love to go through some of the questions that come through fantastic would love to but thank you so much Thank you so much for being on the show. Really appreciate you giving us your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today. I really hope that you enjoyed it and got a lot of value from it. Help me help others by sharing this podcast. And if you feel called to leave a review on Apple Podcasts, remember to let me know so that I can send you a very special thank you gift. Now go and build your dream business and I will see you next time. Bye.